Engaging Roman Glass. In 63 BCE, the Romans conquered Syro Palestine, bringing the many glassworks of that area under their dominion. Artisans were already making glass vessels in pre Roman times, but glass blowing had not yet been perfected. Roman glass blowing techniques improved upon the blowpipes of the Phoenicians and combined art with industry. Early glass vessels were made by applying frit, which is a crushed glass around a core made of clay. Glassmakers could add and manipulate colors after the first layer was in place. Because it was a difficult and time consuming process, glass vessels were luxury items. Here are some examples of small, core form vessels in the Semitic Museum's collection. Originally, they may have held perfumes. As demonstrated in artwork since the earliest days of glassworking, the tools and traditions have changed little since they were first developed. Glass blowing was discovered around the year 50 BCE. In glass blowing, a bulb of molten glass is gathered on the end of the blowpipe and then inflated by the breath of the glass worker. The resulting vessel is either free blown or blown into a mold. Glass blowing techniques allowed for the production of an infinite variety of vessel sizes and shapes. Glass became more accessible and less expensive. Note the variety of forms in these few examples. Mold-made glass was extremely common throughout the Roman Empire. Its relatively quick production rate helped to satisfy the demand for inexpensive household storage and transport vessels. These three flasks were made by fusing chips of molten glass inside two or perhaps three-part molds. These other vessels were also made with the assistance of molds. Many glass vessels were created to meet the needs of a woman's daily toiletry. These ornate flasks were probably used to store oils or cosmetics such as coal or galena, which is a lead-based mineral, both popular eye makeups of the time. A spatula would have been used to scoop contents from these containers. Here are several examples of these twin-chambered flasks. Unguateria held the assorted liquids, or semi-liquids, used in daily life by nearly every member of Roman society. The vessels, appearing in a variety of shapes and sizes, contained products such as oils, perfumes, cosmetics, pigments, salves, and medicines. You can see a few types here. The iridescent colors on many of these objects add to their beauty. It may be surprising to learn that this appearance is not original and that the glass looked quite different when created. Many chemical changes occurred in the burial environment, and this weathering of the glass surface created its iridescence. The fall of the Roman Empire in the late 4th and 5th centuries did not severely affect glass production in the Near East. 
artisans continued to produce beautiful glass vessels that were stylistically derived from Roman wares for centuries afterwards and continue to do so today.